Got some tape here. This is the cutout shape. It's actually a gasket for the new electrical panel. It'll tell us how big a space we got to cut out here. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. Welcome back to the Boat Works. If you've been following my channel, you know that I've spent about the last 18 months working on a small 20-foot sailboat that I purchased a while ago. This boat has been on my bucket list for, you know, two decades at least. I've always wanted one of these boats. I think they're very salty. I always thought it would be cool to own one of them. I finally found one and then I launched into a restoration on this boat over the last couple of months. I've been documenting it on YouTube. You can see all the episodes on my playlist. It's called Small Sailboat Restoration. When I first got the boat, I imagined there were about a half a dozen things that I wanted to do to it to kind of improve it and get it ready to go. But as it happens, that list turned into more than a dozen items that I needed to kind of fix or improve on the boat to make it something well, a little bit special. In the last two months, I've been wrapping up the final items on that list and I only have two things to go. I need to install a 12 volt electrical system in the boat and I need to do the rigging and the sails and get this boat ready for sea trials. This episode is going to be all about putting a small 12 volt system inside your small sailboat restoration project. There's just not a lot of room inside here. All right. So this is the original electrical panel here. This is the elect original electrical panel that was here. Looks like they had an outlet to plug something in. And then they had two switches, presumably maybe for the masthead light and also for the uh, running lights and nav lights, uh, you know, so you can use the boat at night. So our electrical panel is going to be just as simple, but uh, instead of it being a piece of plywood or whatever, it'll be an actual uh, store-bought panel. So uh, well, probably what we need to do is get this out of the way so we can take a look at this bulkhead and see what's happening here. Before you do this, make sure you mark what wires go where. That'll save you a lot of trouble. And in fact, somebody did that, so I think we're good to go. These are labeled here, so uh, we'll start getting rid of some of this. This is just, I don't know. All right, get rid of that. And this. Who knows what that is? Okay, all right. That's that. All right, so now what we got to do here is we got to figure out what, let's see if you can see this here. What What is going on right here? And there's something, perhaps when I remove this trim, it's not quite in the right place, although the screw holes line up. Perhaps this panel, you know, was contoured at one point, but now it's broken. So, the smart thing to do would be to cut this. But in order to do that, I got to get behind here to see it because this doesn't come off, it's fixed in too many places here. These are backing blocks here to, I don't know why that's there. We're gonna get these off of here. And basically, I'm gonna put a panel right here. If you're thinking about restoring a classic sailboat or an old trawler, check out all of the videos on my YouTube channel. Consider joining the workers or taking advantage of my boat restoration consulting services. I offer personal coaching for your boat restoration project. Be sure to like and subscribe. This channel would not be possible without your support. Thank you. I talked about this in a previous episode where I was working on the helm station for the Oldman 27 pocket trawler. It's not uncommon when you're doing one of these boat restorations to have all sorts of 
holes cut into bulkheads and things where people have mounted various electronic items over time. And you've got to come up with a way to have a uniform surface to put the new switches and panels into. Often the go-to material is something like acrylic, plexiglass, something like that, especially if it's a solid opaque color. Some people like to use a decorative piece of wood. I'm not a fan of using aluminum or any sort of metal for my switch panels, but I'll tell you a really effective kind of do-it-yourself budget material is some sort of HDPE, something like a very thin piece of cutting board. This is about a 3 16 inch thick piece of HDPE. On one side, it's got a textured surface. On the other, it's a little bit glossy, but I think it'll work fine to cover up the holes and then we can mount everything into that panel. You can cut it with regular woodworking tools. You can sand it. Be sure to round over the corners using a round over bit. It'll give it a nice finish. So, uh, I think one of the things we could do is put a radius on these corners and it might, might give us just enough room to line this up. And then you can put two, three, four and put your panel right inside there all right that's what we're gonna do that's the plan let's talk about some rules when you're gonna cut holes for panels or switches i think it's worth mentioning again when you're doing this type of fitting you really got to take your time and you need to make very tiny cuts a little bit a little bit a little bit at a time don't get too aggressive because you won't be able to put material back once you take it away. So uh, sometimes it's kind of tedious, takes a couple tries to get everything to fit, but believe me, it's much better than taking away too much material and then you gotta start all over again at the very, very beginning, starting from your raw stock material. Don't rely solely on the patterns or templates you have for the item. I've learned to always err on the side of caution, making my holes a little bit smaller than they need to be even when I'm using a template. You need to make sure that you have very sharp blades to do this type of precision cutting. If your blades are a little bit worn, if they're not very good quality, your cuts are gonna be sloppy and it can really throw off something like this and kind of ruin the cosmetic finish if things don't quite look right and your lines aren't straight or they're just kind of rough and ragged mask off everything you don't want your surface getting scratched or damaged when you cut your hole the last thing i'll tell you is that it's quite common that sometimes well you have to screw up the first time to go ahead and do a second one properly sometimes you have to do a test run kind of work out all the kinks in your process figure out the material and understand how it's going to respond to what you're trying to do don't feel bad if you have to do it twice that's just the nature of the business. Finish sanding on plastics like HDPE or even acrylic should be done with very fine sandpaper. In some cases, I'll start with 220 and I may even go higher all the way up to 600 grit. All right, so what we got here is, this is our HDPE panel. Got some tape here. This is the cutout shape. It's actually a gasket for the new electrical panel. It'll tell us how big a space we gotta cut out here. <laughs> and I've marked some drill points here so I can mark on here without damaging this. But basically, this will go in here like so. Like this. So here's what we got here. Hopefully this will fit. Let's see. Oh, so tight. Look at look. <laughs> look, we're right there on the edge. R right there. Where is a pencil? Let's see if I can mark this here. So I've done this two or three times already, and I'm still slightly off. Thank you. 
there's a there's a little bus bar here that's kind of in the way we just got to take off that little bit all right Boomba. okay I think we're going to uh, I'm going to get rid of this. Point of that is that it goes in like this. There we go. Not bad, not bad at all. All right. We drill some holes next. I think I'm pretty average in my marine electrical knowledge. I've taken a couple classes, some of them professional, some of them commercial classes. I've already done a couple boats with some smaller systems, pretty simple stuff. If you were to look at some of the boats that I've restored, you can get an idea kind of what my experience is like. Maybe it'll help you figure out where you fall on the spectrum. I personally have done everything from a boat that just ran off of AA batteries to doing something that had both a 120 volt and a 12 volt system and was for liveaboard ability. I would put my Alban 27 pocket trawler project somewhere a little bit beyond that. It's definitely in the more complex kind of end of the spectrum. The 12 volt system for the Skipper 20 is going to be a basic system, something very similar to what I did for the Compact 16 pilot house build. It's just going to be maybe three circuits, running lights, masthead light, and then probably probably a 12 volt accessory outlet, and that's pretty much it. I wanna leave the system flexible so someone can add on to it, maybe do their own thing, install a solar panel or whatever they're gonna do for small time cruising. You know, I've talked about it on my channel before, whenever you're doing marine electrical system work, right? There are these rules from the ABYC, the American Boating and Yacht Council. They're really guidelines that kind of tell you, you know, what the standards should be, what type of equipment you're supposed to be using, some of the best practices, and you know, what you're supposed to be doing as a minimum standard if you're rewiring your boat. It's one of those things that adds an extra cost to your boat restoration because when you've built a system from scratch where well, you got to follow the ABYC rules. And one of those rules says that if you have a 12 volt system, you need to be able to have a master switch, a battery switch to turn everything off, you know, from the battery to the panel. So this means I've got to install a battery switch, you know, to that panel. I wish I didn't have to, but that's the rule. So go ahead and we'll put a small switch in there. I like the idea of being able to turn everything off when I leave the boat, come back, turn everything on. I think it's just going to be a good idea. When I do these episodes on marine electronics, I try to cover topics that are not normally talked about. So if you're interested, you know, in how to attach, you know, connectors and wire sizing and all this sort of stuff, there's plenty of other videos on YouTube to look at. Check out my episodes on rewiring the pocket trawler. I try to talk about the theory and the practical application, the process of how you go about doing some of these projects when you're restoring an old boat. I think that accomplishes what we wanted to do. 
It covers up the holes that were in the bulkhead here. We've got a very simple panel. It's nice and clean, very simple. There's not much to it. There's plenty of room to expand later on. Somebody wants to add something onto it. Now, all I think I have to do is kind of hook things up, get the running lights connected, and we'll pretty much call this done. We're one step closer to getting this sailboat finished. The restoration is almost done. And the only thing left now is to get the new sails and put them on the boat and see what we've got going on with the roller furling. Now I'll cover that next time when I come back for another episode. I hope you join me. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.